So welcome everyone. We are delighted to showcase today's paper, uh, Application of Deep Reinforcement Learning Control of an Inverted Hydraulic Pendulum by Faraz Brumantpour, which has been awarded 2023 Best Paper Award published in the International Journal of Fluid Power. Congratulations, Faraz. Thank you very much. And, and today here with me is Nikki Dennis, journalist publisher, who will introduce the journal. Hi, so I'm, yes, I'm the journal's publisher for River. Um, I don't know, it's kind of for the wider audience, we're a small to medium sized STM publisher based in Denmark. We have a globally distributed workforce based in Japan, India, Croatia, Denmark, the UK, Canada and the US. And we pride ourselves particularly on being approachable, flexible and very focused on the author and editor's needs. So we're different from the big guys in, in that respect. We publish 17 high quality journals across a range of topics ranging from like web engineering, ICT standardization to distributed energy and of course fluid power. And the journal we're here today to talk about is the International Journal of Fluid Power, which was established in the year 2000. So it's now in volume 24. It was the first English language scientific journal fully dedicated to fluid power technology. And it provides essential reading for engineers and academics in, interested in advances in, in modern fluid power technology. In addition, the journal also, with Andrea's help, promotes international fluid power conferences, workshops and exhibitions taking place around the world and was and sponsored by the Global Fluid Power Society. All our published papers are peer reviewed by at least two leading experts and we, we take research integrity very, very seriously. We're extremely lucky to have an excellent editor-in-chief and Professor Andrea Vacha, who is the Maha Fluid Power Faculty Chair and Professor of Mechanical Engineering at Purdue University. I'm going to hand you over to him to introduce the best paper and get into the technical bit of the discussion. Thank you. Yeah, thank you, Nikki. You introduced the journal and myself already greatly. So perhaps I can add uh, uh, a couple of words. The journal is uh, the reference journal for the Global Fluid Power Society, as you said, and we are uh, strict. Uh, we have a, a rejection rate at desk uh, more than 50% and after review further um, rejection, so we are quite selective. Um, the journal also recently got an impact factor uh, and we are open access uh, since uh, now two years, well, a little more than one year. And uh, yeah, we have this initiative to choose uh, a paper every year uh, that we want to uh, elect as a best paper and uh, uh, the criteria for uh, uh, choosing a paper is uh, based on uh, topic of course uh, but all the topics of the paper published are good so we look at other uh, parameters uh, such as downloads the number of views and uh, to see uh, what, what is uh, interesting about the the, the paper what uh, um, so yeah, the, the paper by Faraz is uh, on a topic that is uh, hot, as we know, uh, today, so on using artificial intelligence for, for solving problems. Uh, and that is uh, that was one of the reasons driving the decision to say, okay, the paper is uh, has a good standing and those is a hot topic, so let's uh, uh, let's go for it and. Uh, uh, the, the, the board members they approved the decision and so so yes congratulations Faras and I let you uh, to cover more about uh, uh, your paper. Thank you very much. Uh, so uh, what uh, regarding our paper um, should I just start uh, regarding the general idea the motivation um, we started off by uh, my, my background is electrical engineer, so I had uh, a lot of um, subjects uh, during my studies regarding machine learning, and I also did my master thesis regarding machine learning since it's a new, new uh, topic, a uh, brand new topic, as you already said, Professor Vacha, um, and I wanted to take a, uh, some learn something about that, and at the EPAS I had the uh, opportunity to not only uh, do some simulation, but also uh, eventually try to apply my um, algorithm to the real test rig because at the EPAS we have our, our, our own area where we have machines. We also built an inverted pendulum, a hydraulic, hydraulic actuated inverted pendulum. And the idea is that 
um, based on these data-based um, machine learning based uh, control algorithms, we are able to implement flexible control structures, which are able to solve nonlinear problems. As we all know, in hydraulics, we have a lot of nonlinearity. That's also one of the reasons we choose the inverted pendulum, because in YouTube, uh, there's a lot of examples where an inverted pendulum is solved. Most of the time, it's with um, maybe with an electric motor, which is a little bit more charming, a little bit more uh, uh, easy, easier than in the hydraulic system. In the hydraulic system, the oil, we have compressibility, we have to think of the thermic, uh, the thermal effects, and therefore I wanted to um, test how well we can control the hydraulic system with uh, reinforcement learning. Very nice. Uh, Anna, do you want to uh, go ahead with some questions uh, on this paper? Well, I'm, I'm happy to. I'm, I was interested for us about that, that I can see that it's a, it's a, as Andrea says, machine learning, reinforcement learning, all very hot topics at the moment, but applied, so you've got very complicated mathematical area applied to control theory plus fluid power. So you're taking three extremely complicated subjects and kind of pointing down together. So I'm interested in, in um, did you, what, was there a particular software you use for some of your simulation training or? Mm -hmm. how did yeah, that that's, that's a very good question. So um, I think uh, for reinforcement learning, it, it's always going to be, or machine learning itself is always going to be a quite interdisciplinary topic. So mm -hmm. we yeah. will have on one side, we will have the, engineers who are focused on the hydraulic part, who know the machines, who can do the mechanic part, who can do the, who know how the, the oil is going to behave, how the mechanical part is going to behave. Then we have on the other side, we have the implementation software, it's the software developers, and also at the end, somehow the engineer who has to understand the maths behind it, because everyone can write some code, but at the end it should function all together. And in this, uh, in the paper, we also demonstrated that we worked in uh, Python, we use the open source uh, language Python because it's uh, one of the most important and strongest languages and frameworks for machine learning. Okay, that's very good. And so where do you see the application, you know, the, I'm not a fluid power expert, but so you've done this interesting research, where are the application is going to take us? Where would you like to see the applications take us? Mm -hmm. um, so for uh, starting, the starting point would be that we, um, aim to integrate reinforcement learning in more uh, than just uh, for the for the beginning we use an inverted pendulum but there's also research who has been done um, um, i also attended the scandinavian international fluid power conference last year where they also showed reinforcement learning for excavators so um, i think the, the area of reinforcement learning control is really important for mobile machinery where we have a lot of non-linearity, for example, if we have a dig and dump, dump cycle, uh, where we have to uh, investigate something like the ground, the soil, which is quite complex, and database approaches are going to uh, help us there a lot. Um, noteworthy is that we always have to keep our engineering knowledge. So it's not that we can solely rely on data. We always have to keep the understanding of the fluid power and the drives. Otherwise, it's just, the, the algorithm just knows data. It doesn't know what's really happening. Yeah, that's it. That, that um, resampling from within itself, it's like you need actual real stuff, information coming in. Yeah. That's how, how did you get into this area yourself? So you said you started as an electrical engineer? So. Yes. Uh, I did my master's in electrical engineering. Um, and uh, at the end, when my master thesis was uh, due, I wasn't quite uh, content with the studies I had. So I uh, started uh, mechanical engineering, the automation engineering here at the RWTH Aachen University. And there I attended lectures from the Institute for Fluid Power uh, of the IFAS. Yeah. And uh, there I got to know the IFAS and um, I had the opportunity, I, I saw that they were building the inverted pendulum. And um, the idea was that in my master thesis, uh, which later then um, developed into this paper or in this journal that I will aim to um, yeah, control yeah. this inverter pendulum mm -hmm. with reinforcement learning. Fantastic. Yeah, I can also ask uh, perhaps uh, a little deeper, right? The, 
I, I guess the uh, is a very good um, example what you put. Uh, you also mentioned that you are working on the experimental side to 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 assess the the effectiveness of the controller. The the how do you uh, see? And, and you, I know that you are also exploring other areas of applications. How do you see the, the application in more complex cases where the training can be uh, way more difficult, where mm -hmm. data uh, are missing? Uh, so, what are the strategies that you are investigated? You 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 still uh, think that the physics-based uh, approach is the way to go, or, or how should we collect data? So I'm, I'm interested in your opinion on that. Yeah. Um... So, uh, one main challenge in reinforcement learning is, of course, the transfer to the real world. And I think in this transfer, uh, our knowledge as engineers from the field of fluid power will be really important because then we can, it's not always that we have to really directly integrate our physical knowledge into our system, but just by while we're developing this process or the whole pipeline, knowing the system will enhance our performance tremendously. That's what I saw already in the in my paper with the reinforcement learning, uh, where I didn't know, uh, where it wasn't really focusing on the physics part itself. Uh, right now, one of my main uh, focuses is, of course, physics and for machine learning, and I think um, combining them, so not relying just on physics and not relying just on data, the hybrid approach will um, enhance our performance in the area a lot, even for very complex systems uh, with non-linearities and high degrees will be able to we will be able to solve them i, I guess another uh, question not really perhaps very technical but uh, uh, now we, we are featuring you as the lead author of this paper um, and you mentioned already this this is an effort from uh, the ifas lab a very uh, established uh, lab in fluid power, by the way, with a very strong reputation. But can you comment also on the contribution of the other uh, co-authors that you have in this paper? So we want to, of course, uh, honor them as well. So yes, perhaps can course. elaborate. Yeah. Yeah. At this point, I want to uh, thank uh, my co-authors, Lovis Kaudera, Gunnar Matisen, and of course my supervisor, Professor Katharina Schmitz. Um, Lovis was my master's student. Uh, he did his master thesis uh, with me, and um, he was really helpful in the area of uh, developing the code. So uh, it, we were doing a lot of part programming, developing the code, testing. So um, in the area of machine learning, a lot of work is done by hyperparameter tuning. So what is the right amount? How uh, big, how wide, how deep should my, my network be? And that was something which Lovis really helped me tremendously. Uh, Gunnar was my uh, master thesis supervisor, so <laughs> I was the supervisor of Lovis and Gunnar was the supervisor of me. And afterwards, when I started the IFAS as a uh, research associate, he still um, gave me really valuable um, support and advice. And of course, Professor Schmitz always had um, uh, the, the support and the, the overview of the whole whole work and the whole um, yeah the whole process. Thank you. Thank you. Well, I again I want really to congratulate you. Uh, Thank for you very much. And uh, I hope that with this video you will get even more readings, uh, yeah. the paper and citations. So congratulations. Thank you very much. We look forward to the next paper. Yeah. So. <laughs> <laughs> so maybe as a last question, then what are your plans for future research endeavors in this in this field? Mm -hmm. So right now, my uh, main focus or one of my main focus is uh, physics informed machine learning. Um, that's a new kind of uh, it's it's actually not it's it's quite an old idea, but it has a revival because of uh, new hardware, new algorithms. The idea to integrate. To integrate our knowledge in machine learning has been older than 40 years, but I think now, or maybe 35 years, and now we have the hardware and the, uh, the algorithms to really do so. And that's one of the main focus of what I am working on right now. So uh, I also want to integrate uh, physical and physics informed reinforcement learning, where I enhance my uh, reinforcement learning controller uh, with uh, not only data but also with physics. And the main Focus or main main enhancement would be that 
I don't need so much data, which is most of the time quite uh, difficult to uh, obtain. Mm -hmm. Sounds good. Yeah. Any other questions, guys? No, fine. Okay. No. Okay. 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 Thank, thank you so much. I also want to thank uh, thank you, Professor Wacker, um, uh, Anna, and also um, and Nikki for for uh, this interview, for this opportunity, so I could uh, present my work. Uh, thank you very much for the questions and also for the award. Um, I'm really happy that uh, that that I can can uh, contribute to the whole fluid power community and uh, with uh, maybe something something new. And uh, I hope that reinforcement learning will not be anymore anything trendy in our community. It will be something which will be established and which we will use as a, let's say, as a common tool in the near future. Great, yeah, absolutely. Okay. Well, congratulations again, and thank you everyone for participating. Yes, thank, thank you. you. All right. Bye.